<laughs> this is God's will. And I'm just an obedient servant of the Most High God. And I'm very privileged to be here. So tonight, Lord, I just praise you. Yes, Lord. And I yes. love you. And I bless you. Oh, yes, I say, oh God, it's oh, all about yes. you, 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 Lord. Yes. So let you be seen and hide me and glorify your name and yes. magnify your name. Amen. And Lord, let your word arise in us. Ignite us to believe you for the impossible. Ignite us to stand in faith for things we don't think will happen, oh God. And oh Father, may we never stay the same. Take us on, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Precious Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. Move on us tonight. Move in us tonight. Yes, Lord. Move by your spirit and we'll give you all the glory. All the praise. Because it all belongs to you, Lord. I'm only standing here empowered by you. It has so little to do with me. So little. So I give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 God is so good, isn't he? Yes, he is. You know, uh, we think if you think it's anything about you, then believe me, you'll find out down the road. It's so little about you. And it's all about him. It's all about his glory and the way he works in us. Tonight I'm speaking on faith, which we've probably heard dozens of messages on faith. So it makes me wonder, why don't we see more? If we all know what it is to walk by faith, yeah. then why don't we see God do more? You know, so we may find out a little bit of that tonight. But how many know that without faith, it's impossible to please God? Amen. If you don't have faith, you cannot please, and it doesn't matter. Amen. So that's the bottom line. Faith is the mandate for pleasing God, and that's the formula for walking with God. For the just shall live by faith, and if he draws back and shrinks in fear, my soul has no delight or pleasure in him. Hebrews 10.38. Uh, so we see that's God's formula. And sometimes I have to remind myself Hallelujah. when I'm struggling or I'm saying, oh, why is this so hard? You know, God, sometimes. And the Lord said, the just shall live by faith. And I'm like, that's, we don't like that in the flesh. And I'll touch, we don't like living by faith, really. I mean, you know, we sound real spiritual in church. Uh -huh. But when it comes right down to the nitty gritty of yeah. life, Amen. we'd like to see it right in front of us. And Amen. we don't want to wait to see it. Amen. So, a time is running out for Lois Boone. She needed exactly $153.27 to, to pay her plane fare to attend a workshop of mm -hmm. lymphoedema. It's had a lot of swelling in her arm from surgery, from mm -hmm. cancer. This was a special opportunity. God had provided the money for the workshop, and she needed the money for mm -hmm. her flight. And there was no doubt in her mind mm -hmm. that God had provided for it, and now he was going to take care of this, but there was no money in her budget. So she was standing in faith. So she was to meet her friend at the travel agency and pick up her ticket. And she noted that one of the ladies she had just lunch with had come back after driving off. She said, I know you don't know me very well. The lady came back to her and said, and I hope you don't think I'm crazy, but please don't be offended by this. And then she shared how God had prompted her to save money over several months to give to Lois. So she pushed the envelope to her and said, you know, the Lord bless you. She was a little embarrassed that she was even giving it to her, you know. And, uh, but I have to obey God, she said. Isn't it good when we have to Amen. obey God? Sometimes that's hard. You have to obey Amen. God. You know? So with tears in her eyes, I emptied the contents out on the seat and started counting. All kinds of bills and change came to a total of exactly $153.27. Isn't that amazing? Amen. That's the God we serve. He is very particular, and he's very minute. He knows all about it. But I think among believers today, there is really a crisis of faith. Mm -hmm. I really do. And the reason I think there's such a crisis of faith is because people aren't in the Word. They're not in the Word much. Mm -hmm. So we have, we're living in very perilous times when it seems like, you know, you don't know what's going to happen. We just had that terrible attack in Syria, and then we yeah. responded. Mm -hmm. And that's all very scary stuff, really. You know, when you think about it, that could cause another war. We don't know what will happen. Mm -hmm. But overall, the body is complacent, lethargic. You know, most people aren't, you know, just going about their lives. They're not really paying a lot of attention to what's happening in the world sometimes or are really seeking God. But I thank God that I got a call from intercessors, um, intercessors group across the country. And I was praising God. I couldn't join them at 1215 Friday. But believe me, I was praying in my prayer closet that morning. And they were praying for the nation. Mm -hmm. And they were praying for the administration, praying for God to move and for his will. So we need to rise up in faith Amen. more than ever. We need to stand on the wall in faith like Nehemiah 
And we need to have strong faith in this hour. Hallelujah. Because the enemy is coming against God's people adamantly, adamantly. So we know that the flesh wars against the spirit, right? Amen. And the flesh wars against us walking in faith. But faith is God's formula. And he's not going to change. That's his formula. No matter how hard it is for us. In 1 Kings chapter 17, there was a severe famine in the land. Elijah had been nourished by a brook where God had sent ravens to him and bread and meat. Isn't that mm -hmm. awesome? Amen. And after a while, the brook dried up. Mm -hmm. So God spoke to Elijah. Now, mind you, there was no Bible. There was no written out anything. God spoke to Elijah by the Spirit. Amen. All right? So that would be even harder than now when we have so many ways to hear, hear from God, right? Uh -huh. When you have so many people speaking, you Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. First Kings 17, 9. Notice how God spoke clearly to Elijah yes. exactly what to do. And he even said, I've commanded a widow to provide for you. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. God was sending him, but he was going before him to make the crooked places straight to command this widow to take care of him. But see, Elijah had to really know God, didn't he? Mm -hmm. He had to know the voice of God, and he had to really believe that was God, because that was taking a big risk, Amen. you know, yet there wasn't anything there. And to be sent to a widow, I mean, how much money does she have? Come on, you really need faith to go to a widow and expect her to feed Amen. you. But so he stepped out, you know, in faith to do what God had told him to do. And that's what God is asking us to do. Right. How many here are praying and believing and standing in faith for something? I bet Amen. we all are. You want to see God move. You want to see God move on your family. There's people we're praying for in our family. There's so many needs of people that we hear from every week. Maybe you've been crying out to God for some time for something, you know. And faith really is the universal, international currency of God that we can spend anywhere on anything. Amen. We just have to believe God, what he said, that it's true. The Greek word for faith is pistis, or pistuio which means persuasion, conviction of the truthfulness of God, mm -hmm. or reliance all on God. Mm -hmm. Now, we've all been given a measure of faith, the Bible says. Yes. And we know that faith comes by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit gives faith. Mm -hmm. And it's also a gift of faith that God gives us to believe Amen. for very specific things. And I've had that in my life many times. But faith is much more than just believing God can do something. Do we actually believe that he will? See, it's not just believing God can. Mm -hmm. Anybody can believe God can do something, right? Yes, amen. That's not faith. That's not faith. Mm -hmm. Faith is knowing that he will. He will. Yeah. And I'm going to go into that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Knowing that he will. It's much more than believing than God can. And that's where I think sometimes we miss it. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, and this really hit me last year, and I think I've shared this with you in another message. Therefore, I tell you, all the things you pray for and ask, believe that you have received them, and you will have them. Well, that's pretty powerful. John 15, pretty powerful. Yes. Believe that you have received them. Yes. Now, see, I think what we do, a lot of times we pray, and we say, okay, well, I'm going to see if God does this. But that's not faith. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's not, I'm going to wait to see if he does it. That's not faith at all. That's just believing that God can. Amen. That's not believing that he will, you see. So we've got to base our faith on what the Word says, and if God gives you a rainbow word, right. that's what you've got. And then you can take it to the bank. That's it. it doesn't matter. You know? So we must believe we've already received it. And I'm going to challenge us. How many of us are doing that? I'm not always doing that. You know, I have to say, wait a minute. I'm not really. I have to say, am I really believing I'm going to receive this? And then I challenge myself to believe God's Word. But where there is faith, there's an expectancy for God to move. There, if there is not an expectancy, and you're just waiting to see if he's going to move, that's not faith. Mm -hmm. see? There has to be an expectancy. Amen. You have to believe that God says who he is. He said, without faith, it's impossible to please God. You must believe that he is, that he's what? He's a great creator, Amen. and he spoke the world into being. He's awesome, yeah, mighty, and you can't even right. imagine how great God is. Mm -hmm. And you must believe that he is, mm -hmm. and that he rewards those who diligently seek him, Amen. according to what he's promised us. In the work. Yes. Now, if you pray for a Rolls Royce, you may not get it. Amen. But if you pray along the lines of the word, you're going to get it. Amen. So as we know that's God's formula and we see that's how he works, we also have to say sometimes faith is risky. Mm -hmm. It's a little scary. 
God will ask you to step out of something, and that can be very scary. But I think even more than that sometimes is it just plain downright not comfortable yeah. to the flesh, yeah. you know? Because my flesh would like to see something, thank you, you know? Yeah. It's not comfortable because I want to be in control and you want to be in control, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So the truth is, if I can see the answer, I don't need faith. Uh -huh. I don't need faith. I only need faith for something I can't see. It's to believe for what I cannot see. It's the evidence of things not seen. George Mueller said, what is faith? Mm -hmm. Faith is the assurance that the thing which God has said in his word is true. Mm -hmm. And that God will act according to what he said in his word. This assurance, this reliance on God's word, this confidence is faith. Amen. It's a downright, total bedrock conviction that if God said it, he's going to do it. Amen. He's going to do it. Amen. There's no if, ands, or buts. Mm -hmm. I'm not hoping. I'll hear, well, I hope. I hope God cares. Oh, come on. You don't know the word. He cares. He cares, he cares for you so much. He loves you so much. He knows the words you're going to speak before you say them. Amen. So you see, that's why we don't have faith sometimes. We don't know the word. Now, faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see, the conviction of their reality, faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Now, I've had that happen to me, so real and specific things God said to me about things he's going to do. And I knew that I knew that I heard from God. Amen. I didn't see any sign of it happening at all. Amen. In fact, I waited and waited and waited sometimes. Sometimes months, sometimes years. And then I would see God bring about what he said. And then you just know that you know that this God is for real. He is going to do what he said. So we have to stand in faith, even though it defies logic. And you all know this. It's kind of a nice review for you, though. But the people on Facebook may not all know this. And we are pleased to be able to share this with you. We don't see it. We don't see it. We don't touch it. We don't feel it. We don't hear anything. And we're not tasting anything. And it's the evidence of things not seen. It's the total bedrock conviction that what God has said, Amen. he is going to do. And brothers and sisters, Amen. we need to rise up in Amen. our faith. We need to challenge ourselves. Hallelujah. That if God has said this, and I'm going to challenge us tonight, we're going to talk a little bit at the end, Amen. then he is going to do it. Why? Because he has power to perform his work. Yes, he has. He has Amen. power to perform his work. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? Yes, he does. Amen. Kathy Pelton shared in the Elijah List a few years ago a true story about her son who had been very healthy up to age seven when he was diagnosed with neurological problems resulting in seizures and, loss of med and lots of medication. From the day he was diagnosed, Corey, her son, began telling everyone God was going to heal him. Hallelujah. That's amazing for a seven-year-old. You know? As the years went by, his ailment worsened and it became more difficult for us as parents to believe that he would be healed. However, Corey never doubted in his heart. God must have given him a rhema, the spirit. Mm -hmm. Although he became discouraged at times, just like we did. The trial of our faith being much more precious than gold. Yeah. There are times we're going to have to wait. If God doesn't answer your prayer, though now for a little while, you may have had to suffer grief and all kinds of trials. These have come... So that your faith of greater worth than gold. Hallelujah. Now, if I had a pile of gold here, mm. I mean, a pile of gold, you know how much gold is worth a lot of money. Mm -hmm. The word said our faith Amen. is much more precious than gold. Amen. And now people are hoarding gold. That's the answer. Money, money, money. It's not the answer. Your faith in God, and my faith, is way more precious Amen. than gold. Amen. And it's perishes, Amen. which perishes even though we Confined by God, may be true, genuine, and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. So she said, "We're battled with hope, deferred as the years roll by, and that's very likely to happen." He was seven at fifteen. That's eight long years. Mm -hmm. This kid is really suffering. His parents are suffering. His fifteenth birthday, Corey announced that God would heal him and he would be healed. <laughs> that is so. Yeah. This is so awesome yeah. to me. And I wanted to protect him from disappointment, she said. She didn't have the faith for it. Mm -hmm. She said, oh, God, please, I, I, I'm going to be depressed. What am I going to do, you know? But he exclaimed, tonight I will be healed. Hallelujah. What is faith? This is the faith that God gives us mm -hmm. when we hear a rhema word from him. Amen. When he says, this is what I'm going to do. You may have to wait 10 years for it. 
But I promise you, he will deliver. He will deliver. So I pray, come quickly, Lord, for you are my hope. Lord, for my depression deepens. But don't turn away from me or I shall die. Let me see your kindness in the morning, for I am trusting in you, Psalm 143. So during the middle of the night, I was awakened by the Spirit of the Lord, heavy in the house. Angels had filled our home, and I knew it was for Corey. Corey was visited in his sleep, and he was completely healed. Awesome? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Completely healed. Yes. He had control of his body and control of his emotions, and within a week, he was off all medications Amen. and playing sports soon in high school. Amen. Isn't that amazing? Amen. So don't cast away your confidence, Hebrews yeah, says. Hallelujah. Therefore do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. Yes. For you must need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of yes. God, you may receive the promise. Yes. Confidence. Mm -hmm. It's a total assurance that what God says in this word, yes. that he will do. He will, he will surely it. do, and I'm going to give you quite a few examples. Of what God is saying. And are we believing him? Amen. I believe if the church really believed God the way he wants us to. We're going to see way more happen. Amen. Amen. We're going to see God do so much more. So much more. Oswald Chambers says faith is not intelligent understanding. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with our reasoning. That's right. It's a work of the spirit in us. Mm -hmm. It's given by the spirit. The Holy Spirit gives faith. Yes. By the word we get faith. By the spirit mm -hmm. we get faith. Faith is a deliberate <coughs> commitment to a person. When I see no way. Faith never knows what is being led, but it loves and knows the one who's leading. Boy, I remember saying years ago, I don't know what I'm going through. I don't know mm -hmm. why I'm going through this. Yeah. I don't have one answer. I don't have any answer for anybody. It was so horrible what I was going through. And mm -hmm. so, But I said, I know there is God. Yes, amen. And he is the God who is more than enough. Amen. I knew amen. that. In the depths of my heart, I knew God enough to know that he was with me and he was going to work. And yes. he was working. So let us run with confidence the race that lies before us, keeping our eyes on Jesus, yes. the source and perfecter of our faith. Amen. Jesus is the source and perfecter. Him. He is the one. We don't conjure up faith by naming and claiming and, you know, affirmations. No. Jesus is the source and perfecter of our faith. Come back to Jesus all the time. All the time. And Lord, help us do that. So what is the difference? And is there a difference between faith and belief? And there is somewhat of a difference, you know. Um, the great battle in our lives is will, will we believe God? Mm -hmm. I mean, really believe what he says in the Word. Because I, as I quoted, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Yes, amen. Now, if we believe something, actually what we're saying is we agree that it's true. I agree that today was a beautiful day, but windy. Mm -hmm. You know, or I might agree on a certain political thing. Who knows what I, I might agree on something. In the Bible, to believe and have faith mean about the same thing. Mm -hmm. But there is some difference as we practice it out. But believing in the Bible doesn't just mean to agree that something is true. It means to rely on it as true yeah. and surrender to it. Yeah. So there's a difference. Do you believe in one God? You do well, James said. The, de the demons believe and, yeah. and tremble. Yeah. Okay. And Luke 8, 26 to 30, there's the story of the deliverance of the demoniac. I love this. I always yeah. am amazed at these stories. When the demoniac saw Jesus, the man, he cried out and fell down before him and said in a loud voice, What do, what do you have to do with me, Jesus, yeah. you son of the most high God? Uh -huh. This demon recognized Jesus. Yes. and knew who he was. They, they believed in God. Oh, yes. The demons believe in trouble. Mm -hmm. So believing that God exists and God says something does not mean you're walking in faith. Right. There's a difference between that. Real faith starts with belief Amen. and says it's true. Amen. And I can agree mm -hmm. that this chair is here. Mm -hmm. And I can believe that this chair could hold me up. Mm -hmm. Right? I can believe that. But if I never sit on this chair... Mm -hmm see if it holds me up. Yeah. Then I'm not relying on it. I haven't surrendered to it. Yeah. I'm only mentally saying I believe it could hold me up. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I don't have enough faith mm -hmm. to actually sit on this chair and say, okay, I trust this chair that it's going to hold me up. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have to do. Amen. We have to not just believe something. Uh -huh. We have to trust in it right. enough to surrender to mm -hmm. it. 
And boy, that's a whole nother story. That's a different thing. You know, that's different with our lives. Do we trust God enough to trust him with our lives as we surrender them? Or do we just give him so much, you know? So real faith carries with it action. Mm -hmm. There's an action that goes with faith. The word says faith without works is dead, James 2.17. So until we take action with our faith, it's just a bunch of words, just a lot of words <laughs> that I'm saying. I can have a lot of affirmations, all that, you know, um, but we have to actually do something. Years yeah. ago, uh, the Lord led me. It was really hard. I had to wait. I'd gotten laid off of a job right after I married Neil. And um, that was tough for me to wait. I didn't want to wait. But the Lord said, sit down, be quiet. And I'm going to, you told me you, I could have your life, and now I'm taking it. Mm -hmm. I want everything. Mm -hmm. That was my year to give up everything. You know? mm -hmm. Well, the Lord led me to open a consulting business. And I had no clue what to do. I mean, I knew what I would do, but I, I didn't have any job. I didn't have any contracts. I didn't have anything. But I knew when it was time. I waited months and months, and my husband knew. When we moved out in action and got a computer and got our, uh, my business cards, then the Lord opened the door. Amen. But I had to act on what God was telling me. It wasn't just going to happen. See? Right. And I think for many Christians, they want God to do it. They want God to do it all, see? Mm -hmm. And God is waiting for us to do right. something. Yeah. We've got to step out. We've got to act. So real faith motivates us to action. Yeah. When we believe the truth with enough confidence, we will take action. Amen. And we will exercise faith if we have enough confidence in who God is. So we've got to know him. Real faith means to rely on and depend upon and to surrender to. It's to cast my whole self on God. And I can't I can't get into the future. Too many people get in the future. You know, I know it's tough because I think about things in the future too and want to worry. You know, but if my times are in God's hands and I believe every day is orchestrated, then I'm going to say, Lord, Amen. I'm resting in you because my times are in your hands. And when I get to that place, whatever it is I'm fearing or whatever, you're going to take care of me. You're going to be there, you know. Amen. So let's talk about some examples uh, of belief versus faith. How does this translate into everyday living, all right? How does this translate into everyday living? And then we're going to talk a little bit, discuss afterward too. Well, I can believe that I should tithe. I can believe God will bless me mm -hmm. if I give my money. Yeah. But I don't really have faith in that unless I act on it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I can say, oh, yeah, that sounds good. Give 10% of your income and offering. You know, that's a good idea. But unless I believe God <laughs> said that I'm going to be blessed and that try me, Mm -hmm. He's going to pour me out a blessing. Right. It takes faith to talk, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're giving up a good chunk of your income. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to have some faith in right. God. And many people who don't uh, tithe must not have that faith. So I can believe God's word is true about loving my neighbor who might insult me or hurt me. Mm -hmm. And to love my enemies and forgive those who do wrong. Mm -hmm. But what am I doing? Am I loving them? Am I actually acting that out? Mm -hmm. If I believe that I will heap coals of fire upon their head because God said so. Mm -hmm. Then I'm willing to act that out. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I'm willing to act that out and do the good to those who hurt me. Paul says in the scripture, when we are weak, then are we strong in the power of God's might. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but when I feel weak or discouraged or distraught, mm -hmm. I don't feel very powerful. Mm -hmm. You know? I really don't. But what does God say? God says, when you are weak, mm -hmm. then are you strong in the power of his might. And his might is made perfect in our weakness, Amen. right? Amen. That's what the word says. Amen. Now, if I believe that, I'm going to appropriate that and say, God gives strength to the weary mm -hmm. out of Isaiah 40 right. and strengthens the powerless. And they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount upon wings as eagles. Amen. They shall run and not be weary. They're walking up pain. That's what God says. Amen. So that's what I quote every day. Amen. It doesn't matter how this body feels. Amen. I speak divine health. I speak Amen. I'm energized. I speak that I'm strengthened, Amen. and I speak that God is strengthening me because I'm waiting on the Lord. Do you see how this works? We can believe a lot of stuff, but we're not appropriating it in our everyday lives. And I think that's what God is challenging us right now. But God says he'll supply all our needs according to his riches and glory. Amen. And he said not to be anxious. Well, there's not a month goes by that I can guarantee you I say to myself, you're not supposed to be anxious about this. And I know I'm not the only one in here. Amen. You're not supposed to be anxious about this. You're supposed to be trusting God with this. You know, so let's go back to the Word. 
And what does he say? Jesus said in my reading this week, so beautiful, don't keep striving for what you should eat and what you should drink, and don't be anxious. Mm -hmm. For the Gentile world eagerly seeks all these things. Mm -hmm. And your Father knows that you need them. The Gentile world yeah. back then were unbelievers. They, they, uh, they went after pagan gods, mm -hmm. you know. And so, but they, but they, but they do all that, Jesus said. But you are the kingdom. Amen. But you seek his kingdom, and these things will be provided for you. Don't be afraid, little flock, because your father delights to give you the kingdom. Amen. I love that. Your Amen. father delights to give yes. you the kingdom. Amen. So if we believe what Jesus said, yes. Amen. that he delights to bless us and give us the kingdom, and provide, what are we doing walking around mm. in fear? Why aren't we wringing our hands yes. and wondering what is going to happen mm -hmm. when Jesus said he delights to give you the kingdom? Delights. And over and over in scripture, he delights to bless his children. Yeah. We are yeah. blessed indeed. We are fortunate and blessed. I mean, so mm -hmm. many scriptures in the psalm. You see, these are the words that we have to act out. Amen. So if I'm blessed, yeah. I know yeah. God is on my side. Blessed, you know. And he's going to make a way for me somehow. It may not be anything Hallelujah. like what I think. I've seen God do things so opposite what mm -hmm. I thought he would do. Mm -hmm. So opposite. So completely opposite. So one can agree, let's take this to salvation. And I think this is happening today in the church. I think people are believing on Jesus, mm -hmm. but they're not getting saved. Mm -hmm. One can agree that Jesus died for their sins and walk away from it. I believe in the blood of Jesus. I believe Jesus died. But to exercise faith in Jesus' mm -hmm. death for my sins, I must surrender myself to God yes. and trust that his blood cleanses me from sin mm -hmm. and trust that God lives in me by the person of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That's different than believing on Jesus, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So what am I doing? I'm saying I have to believe that he died for my sins. I have to surrender myself to God. Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. me. Believe that his blood shed on the cross mm -hmm. cleanses me from all unrighteousness mm -hmm. and believe what God says in his word, that the Holy Spirit and dwells. Isn't that awesome? So that's what real salvation is. We are not saved because we believe doctrines, truths of the Bible. I want to make that clear. We are not saved because we believe doctrines and truths. Uh -huh. A lot of people believe Christian doctrines. Yes. They're not welcome with God at all. Mm -hmm. But it's rather because we place our faith in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. The person of Jesus Christ. Yes. We're placing our faith in God. Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Not in some philosophical, you know, philosophical idea, okay? Right. Mm -hmm. And we're surrendering to him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's salvation. And we're following after him. Right. So right. Jesus said, if you give your life for my sake, yes. and you lose it for my sake, you're going to yeah. find it. Uh -huh. So Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. Mm -hmm. So we've talked about what faith is. Mm -hmm. We've talked about it's hard in our flesh, right? We've talked there is some difference between belief and faith, isn't there? There's a real big difference there. You can believe a lot about God, but you're not exercising your faith in God to do anything. You're just believing about God. Right. There's a big difference. So how do we grow our faith? And I'm sure we all know mm -hmm. how to grow our faith, but let's just talk a few minutes. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Romans 10, 17. Mm -hmm. That is God's formula. If God spoke the world into being, yes. his word is power. Oh. Right? He, he didn't do anything but speak. It happened. <laughs> I don't know about you, that's, that's beyond me. Mm -hmm. And when I read about and learn about the galaxies, which we were watching a program last week, I was blown away just mm -hmm. by one galaxy. <laughs> that doesn't mean the other one. And the word said the word of God is quick, powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword. Mm -hmm. So God's word is what we have to have as our barometer. This is it. And brothers and sisters, you better know this word because there's mm -hmm. a lot of nonsense out there. Amen. There's a lot of stuff being purported it's God, and it's not God. There's some stretching of the truth. There's some manipulation. There's things that are not really God. Right. So yeah. that's why we have pastors and teachers mm -hmm. in the church. We have people called of God to give the word of the Lord and deliver the word of the Lord. And I love what uh, Moses said in Deuteronomy. Mm -hmm. And this really touched me. And we know this. We know this word. But let's hear it again. And print these words of mine on your heart and minds. Put them as a sign in your hands. And let them be a symbol on your forehead. Mm -hmm. So what is Moses saying? These words I'm giving you are life and death. Life and death. Put them on your doorpost. Put them on your mm -hmm. forehead. Put the word 
before you. Put the word in you and put it where you can see it. That's what it is. Teach them to your children. Talking about them when you sit in your house and when you walk along the road and when you lie down when you get up. Now this sounds like the word has to encompass their lives, doesn't it? It has to kind of take over mm -hmm. the word. The more you get into the word, the more changed you're going to be. Amen. Nothing is going to change us Hallelujah. like the word of God. Yes, that is how powerful it is. Yes, and I know the enemy doesn't want you to read the word. He'll do anything he can to keep you from it. But I want to encourage you to get in the word. He said, write them on your doorposts of your home, on your house and your gates, so that as long as the heavens are above the earth, your days and those of your children may be many, and the land the Lord swore to your fathers. Mm -hmm. You see, write them on your doorposts. Yes. Put them on your mirror. Yeah. Put them, if you need faith or something, stick it up somewhere. Yeah. Put it there. And read the word of the Lord and quote the word of the Lord. Declare Amen. the Lord. Amen. What did Jesus say when he was tempted in the desert? What did he do? What did he say? Did he argue with Satan? Did he say, oh, no? No, he said, man shall not live by bread alone. Everything Satan came, he quoted the word. And that's what we got to do. We're not, I mean, are we greater than Jesus? Absolutely not. The Son of God used the word and knew the word. I better know the word and quote the word. Amen. So I think we need to be people of the word. The spirit is the one who gives life, Jesus said. The flesh doesn't help at all. The words that I've spoken to you are spirit and life. The words I've spoken to you are spirit and life. Go back and read the words Jesus said in the New Testament. They are spirit and life. They will change our lives. Right. Brothers and sisters, if we want people to see God, uh -huh. we got to have his word in us. Hallelujah. we got to be able to declare the word of the Lord and see God do the great things that he said he would do. Amen. So our faith is to a great extent a byproduct of the word of God. The more Amen. God's word Amen. we have, Amen. the more faith we're going to have Amen. that God can do anything. For I am Yahweh your God who Amen. stirs up the sea so that its waves roar. His name is Yahweh of hosts. Mm -hmm. I have put my words in your mouth and covered you in the shadow of my hand. Isaiah 51, 15 to 16. Mm -hmm. Isn't that powerful? Amen. God has said he's put his words in my mouth mm -hmm. yes. and he's covered me with the shadow of his yes. hand. Amen. That makes me feel confident. Hallelujah. Do we believe that? Yes. Do we believe yes. that? Mm -hmm. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High yes. shall abide under the shadow yes. I will say, Lord, he is my source yes. and my strength. God Almighty, he is the one. Hallelujah. This word God puts in our mouth. Are we meditating on God's word? Are we quoting it? Are we drinking it? Mm. I will put my hope in your word, Psalm 119. I am, I am awake through each watch of the night to meditate on your promise. I love Psalm 119. Yeah. It's a beautiful song to pray yes. and to quote. It's a beautiful song. It will change our lives. So my word that comes from my mouth will not return to me empty, God said. Mm -hmm. But it will accomplish what I please Hallelujah. and will prosper in what I send it to. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. It's a definite. I can take that to the bank. God said my word will not return unto me. Boy. Amen. No matter what you think, Bill, it doesn't matter mm -hmm. how you feel today. God's word is true. His word. And that's what you bank on, not what you feel. And I love this scripture too because this is something we all need to know. We need to quote this scripture. And God is able to make all grace abound to you. Mm. He's able to make all grace abound to you. Yes, he is. So that in all things at all times, mm. not some things, not a few things, Hallelujah. all things oh. at all times, yes. having all that you need, Amen. you will abound Hallelujah. in every good work. Yes, Second Corinthians 9 8. Isn't that powerful? Yes. Amen. So that in all things, we need to memorize that scripture. I'm going to memorize that. I have a lot memorized, but I want to memorize this. So powerful. Nothing is impossible for our Yahweh. Yes, that's right. Amen. That's right. But that's beautiful because in all things, God's grace abounds to us. Isn't that powerful? So powerful. So number one, faith comes by the word. It comes by hearing. And just like uh, Moses said, drench yourself, write it on your post, put it on your hand, Put it in that uh, phone, Amen. whatever you have to do, Amen. get the word, the word, the word in front of you. Because that's what's going to give you faith, and the enemy's coming against you, and he's going to come against all of us. He comes against us, and we give him the word just like Jesus did. A faith is born out of knowing God, and I've talked about this before. We only will trust God to the extent that we know him. I cannot trust anyone I don't know. And I don't mean know about God. I mean know God. Amen. Be with him. Spend time with him. Experience him. That's how you get to know God. 
God wants us to believe that he is who he says he is, and he can do what he said he can do. We have to know God to have absolute trust and confidence that he has power to perform his work. To the extent that I'm intimate with God, that's the extent that I will know God moves. The surrender and depth of our faith, the strength and depth of our faith, is dependent on our intimacy with God. I'm going to repeat that. The strength and depth of our faith is dependent on our intimacy with God and our drinking in the work, both of those. An illustration that really touched me that I've read so many times, but um, in Luke 5, 6, 4 through 11, Peter was a fisherman, a professional fisherman. We all know the story. He was fishing. And um, he wasn't called Jesus yet. And Jesus came by and saw him fishing, and they had, they had worked all night and uh, fished, and they had gotten nothing. Okay. All night long, these professional men, and they needed some money, I'm sure. So Jesus said, you know, put your net on the other side of the boat. And of course, Peter thought, who does he think he is? I know what I'm doing. You know, but at your word, Lord. But at your word, I'll do it. He must have heard about you. But at your word, Lord. You know, God's going to say some things to us that don't make sense. You know, well, that, that just, that's crazy. You know, at your word, Lord. But at your word. And so when he did, and he saw the catch, Peter was so shook up. Mm -hmm. That encounter yeah. changed him forever. Mm -hmm. He was so overwhelmed with what he saw. Mm -hmm. He said, get away. I I'm a man. I'm an unclean man. Don't, don't even look at me. Mm -hmm. He was so stricken by the revelation he had of a miracle God. He knew the Messiah was there. He knew this was a miracle. Mm -hmm. And he encountered God in a way he would never be the same. Mm -hmm. He would never be the same. Because the revelation of God came to him. The way we need a revelation of God, Hallelujah. it will never be the same. So encounter us, God, in a way we'll never be the same. We'll never be able to walk away the way we have. Encounter us, God, in a way we will never be the same. We will seek out the way. And we will say, and Jesus said, come and follow me. And I will make you fishers of men. He left everything. Everything. At Jesus' word, he left everything. And that's what God wants us to do. Be so encountered. That we have the faith because we realize the miracle working oh, God, yeah, oh, this incredible God that is, would use me, would use any of us. Yeah, He's yeah. called us to do anything. Yeah. It's amazing to me. Amazing. Oh, yeah. Amazing. So this is the God, that encounter with Peter. When I was, I've never seen that before. And God showed me that revelation of me is what changed that man. Amen. He saw me. He saw Amen. who I was. Amen. My greatness and majesty. God, open our eyes to see you. And then faith steps out. And this is my last thing. Faith is an action word. Yes. And how do we know this? We will have to believe God yes. says who he is. Yes. We'll have to believe God can do what he said he can do. Mm -hmm. We'll have to adjust our thinking in light of this. Do not lean into your own understanding. Yes. Don't reason God away. We can easily do it. We have to trust that God will demonstrate yes. great himself yes. to be who he says he is. And that we step out in obedience like they did in Hebrews 11. Now listen, and you all know this, but listen how they stepped out. They didn't just believe. Uh -huh. By faith, Abraham went out, not yes. knowing where he was going. Does God ever ask you to do that? Mm -hmm. Step out when you don't know. That's pretty uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Pack up your stuff and leave, and I'm not telling you where you're going. Amen. He stepped out in faith. Mm -hmm. That means he trusted God enough that he could surrender to God, and he could believe God would take him where he needed to be. That was the confidence he had. God wants us to have that confidence. Amen. Amen. By faith, Abraham acted and offered up Isaac because he was confident God right. could raise him from the dead. Yeah. Now, I can't even imagine that. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine God asking me to put my child on an altar. But by faith, he did it. Yes, he, that, did. he knew God. Yeah. No Bible at the time. Just the intimacy with God. Mm -hmm. He knew him so well. By faith, Noah, after he was warned about what was yet to be seen, he was motivated by godly fear. He built an ark mm -hmm. to deliver his family. Amen. There was no rain at the time. The whole thing sounded crazy. Right. But he stepped out. He stepped out. Mm -hmm. He believed God enough to step out. Mm -hmm. yeah. To step out and do something. What is God asking us to step out and do? By faith, Ananias believed God and stepped out to minister to Saul of Tarsus, yes. even though he was afraid. Mm -hmm. And the man had a terrible reputation of killing people. Mm -hmm. And uh, Stephen had just been killed. Right. So you can imagine, he, he, he had a note he was hearing from God, Amen. believe me, and he stepped out. He said, okay, God, I heard that. 
I'm stepping out. I'm going to take a risk. I'm going to do this because that's what faith is. Faith steps out. Faith acts on what you know to be true to the word. See, it's not enough to believe that God can do it. We've got to step out in faith and do what he's telling us to do. Amen. What is he telling you to do? You see, Abraham believed hope against hope so that he became the father of many nations. Yes, amen. Even when he was childless, he amen. believed. He did not waver in unbelief at God's promise, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God because he was fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to do. Amen. Oh. I love that. He was fully convinced that what God had said in his word and spoke to him, he was able to do. He had power to do. Are we fully convinced that our God can do the impossible, that he can raise the dead, that he can recreate a need? Do we really believe God can do these things? Because that's all it is. It's up to us, up to our faith. We have to step out. So what is God calling us to walk in faith or to risk something? Perhaps he's asking you to tithe or give offerings or to make a sacrifice to give to someone in need. Perhaps he's asking you to stand on his word in faith and you prayed and you don't see your healing or you don't see somebody else's healing. And sometimes people are tempted to say, well, God doesn't do that anymore. Yes, he does. Yes, he does, yes, he does do that. Amen. We don't have, we can't tell God what to do. Hallelujah. And Amen. we can't uh, do anything to manipulate anything, but we can wait in faith. Right. And whatever God does is good. Right. Are we trusting him for finances? We trust God for finances all the time for these ministries, yeah. and we see him come through. Are we stepping in our fears to witness to strangers? You know, step into your fear and witness to someone. Tell them what it is to accept Jesus Christ. Are we stepping up for godly principles at work? Hallelujah. Sometimes you're persecuted at work. You know, are we giving a love gift sometime for physical or relational healing, perhaps you're standing in faith? Or maybe God's asking you to give a prophetic word or a word of knowledge. It takes faith to do that. Amen. God's asked me many times in my life to give words to people in high places because he told me I would give a word to people in high places Amen. years ago. That takes faith because I don't, I don't feel like I'm anybody special. And God's asking me to call this person up who's well known or, you know, in the area. And I better know I'm hearing from God. And Amen. then I step out and it's God. Yes. It's God. Yes. Praise you, Lord. To him be all the glory. See? So we say we want more faith in conclusion. And we, want, we say we want to see God do more, right? We want to see God move more, do yeah. more. We want more healings. But what are we doing to build our faith? Yeah. I said we build our faith through the Word, yes, you know, through stepping out mm -hmm. and through intimacy with God. Those are key ways to build a faith. This is a profound truth that Jesus said. Be it unto you according to your faith. Matthew. Translated in the Greek, it could be according to your faith, become you. Mm -hmm. But be it unto you according to your faith. That's what Jesus said. Couple of links in the Bible. That's, mm -hmm. Yes, that's what Jesus said. This denotes we have to do something. Amen. Amen. Well. Now about John 14, 12. Mm -hmm. I'm the way, the truth, and the everlasting life. Nobody comes to the, the Father but by me. Yes, yes that's Father beautiful. Said. So this denotes I have to do something. We may believe that God mm -hmm. is and that he rewards those who diligently seek him. We, God is not going to pour faith into us. Amen. We can seek him, we can fast, Amen. we can get in the word, and we can step out and trust him. Amen. We've got to do a lot. The faith is a miracle of the spirit, but we've got to do our part, see. God imparts faith as we press into him and seek him. Amen. There's no shortcut. So that's why we have lethargic Christians who don't believe God. Amen. Or they believe that he said that, but they don't believe do it. Remember, Jesus said, when you pray, if you believe you have received, mm -hmm. you shall receive what you pray for. Mm -hmm. So God, it's, it's okay to give me more faith, Lord. Hallelujah. Pray, but I think even more powerful is pray to know God more. Hallelujah. Because faith comes Amen. through knowing God. So what am I asking tonight? I'm asking and saying to you that it's God's formula to walk by faith. Mm -hmm. That faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. And some of this will be in the notes now. How much of God's word do you have in you? How much can you quote? I'm going to challenge you to quote the word, to memorize the word. You should be able to memorize the word. Some of it. Much more meditation, reading of God's word, and living it out. Declare what God speaks in the word until you see it with your eyes. It is God's faith that we receive. Move from belief to faith, to actual faith, which is reliance and surrender to God. There's a difference. 
call those things into being that are not as though they were. And determined to get to know God so much more. Blessed is she or he who has believed that what the Lord has spoken unto them will be accomplished. Amen. So Father, Amen. tonight we thank you, yes, Lord, Amen. for your word. We thank you for your goodness. We Hallelujah. thank you that God, it's all about you and your word and what you've said. And let faith arise in us, Father. I pray that we'll sense you much greater, a much greater depth of you, Father. As we trust you, as we read the word, give us a heart to get into the word and to seek you more. Let faith arise. Speak to us by the Spirit, Lord. Speak to us, God, about what's important to you, God, about what you want us to stand in faith for and believe for. And Father, I pray that we'll all be uh, encouraged and motivated, God, from this word, that we will rise up in faith and act in faith, act on it, God, Hallelujah. what you told us to do, Father. And we'll give you all the glory and the praise, precious Holy Spirit, Hallelujah. move on us, move on us, Lord. Move on us tonight to believe you for the impossible. Let faith arise. Yeah, hallelujah. Let faith arise in our hearts faith to arise. believe you, Lord. Let it come forth, I pray, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And remember that James said, faith without works is dead. Is dead. Yeah. Is dead. So, so I want to ask you, I'm going to have a little interaction.